Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Bean here and today I'm coming at you with a bit of um, a halloween -y type of video, type of video. Um, basically, I kind of went through my stash of books um, and pulled out some of the books that always get me into the spooky mode for Halloween season. Um, I've seen a lot of books about like witchy books. I've seen a lot of videos that are like witchy books or vampire books. And I just kind of wanted to go a little bit more generic than that. So this is going to be divided into basically two different categories. Now there are five books that I will talk about initially um, that are ones that I always recommend when it comes to the spooky season. Uh, but there are many, many books that I also will not rec will not talk about in this video. Um, so if you have other recommendations, put them down in the comments below because I c cannot go through all of the spooky books. Not to mention, I just don't have a lot of them here because, like I've said before, I have about half of my collection. Anyways. It's also more of a, like, for me, Halloween is just a lot of fun usually. It's a lot of decoration kind of stuff, and we're slowly getting into it. There's still another two weeks until Halloween, but maybe three. I can't count. I don't know how to count some days. Um, but let's hop right into it with some classics. The first book I want to talk about is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, which is a murder mystery that follows ten people who seemingly randomly were invited to an island and then are slowly killed off one by one until nobody remains and we are left trying to figure out who the killer is. Um, this is always one of my favorite books to read. I try to read it at least once every year. It is an intriguing mystery and every single time I read it I do pick up something slightly different. Um, the murderer is not really surprised to me because I know who it is. But it's still a very well done book, in my opinion. The next book I want to talk about is The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is a novella, and while it's supposed to be a surprise, everybody knows the surprise about who Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde are. But that is the basic um, premise of this book, is a scientist. A very well-known, very well-respected scientist named Dr. Jekyll. Um, it comes up that he is associated with a murderous man named Mr. Hyde. And it's all about their connection, and it's very creepy. It's very well done. It's a very good early mon monster story, honestly, because that is what this originally is. I know now it's kind of portrayed as a multiple personality type of book, and I see where that comes from, but that's not how it started. But I won't get into that right now. <laughs> Um, this is always a short but very well done read and I highly recommend it. Next book I want to talk about is Dracula by Bram Stoker. If you have not read this book, this is one of the original vampire novels. Um, this edition also is absolutely gorgeous and I'm in love with it. This is the story about uh, Count Dracula. Well, kind of. This story follows many different characters, one of which is Count Dracula, who is attempting to take over the world, basically, is basically what he's trying to do. Um, this follows several other characters, including a Dr. Van Helsing, not as eccentric as in the Van Helsing movie. <laughs> we have many issues there. Um, but this follows basically a group of English people who are attempting to figure out who, Do who Dracula is, what he is, and how to stop him. It is a very well done book. Um, I absolutely love it. It's creepy, it's disturbing at points, and it is... These are the terrifying vampires to a point. Like, Dracula is a, pers a, a being who speaks as well, so not completely monstrous, but not your Twilight version either. So. Yes, highly recommend this if you have any interest in vampire stories and not the romancy ones, because there is romance in here. It has nothing to do with Dracula. The next book that I'm going to recommend is Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus by Mary Shelley. I got this copy off of um, Kickstarter, and it's gorgeous, and I'm really, like, completely obsessed with it. It's got gold edges, and oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with this book. Um, this is a very interesting creationist story about um, Dr. Jekyll, who's, or not about Dr. Jekyll, 
about Dr. Frankenstein who creates a monster that is known as Frankenstein's that is known as Frankenstein's monster um, because he basically decides that he wants to create new life and so he does and then doesn't know what to do with it and it's it's a very interesting story it's very honestly it's very philosophical at points and it's very well done highly recommend you can see where the original Frankenstein story came from. The last classic. I'm calling this a classic. It's not really a classic. The last book that I will always recommend when it comes to Halloween season is actually a manga and it is Death Note. I have the complete Death Note in one volume. Um, this is the all-in-one edition. It's huge. It is a big book. It is very big. Um, this follows a character named Light who finds a black notebook on the ground at one point and it turns out it is the Death Note which allows him to see and communicate with the Shinigami or the Death Gods. And by doing this, by writing someone's name in the Death Note, Light is able to decide who lives and who dies and the power kind of just goes to his head because Light is bored. So this is always a fun manga to read. It's an interesting anime. Um, I like it up to a certain point, and for those of you who know, you know. This is one of the mangas that really got me into reading manga, and since then I've branched out, obviously, but I still try to make time to read some of the older ones that did get me into it. So, this is one. It's also very heavy. All right, next let's move on to some of the books that I may or may not have read, but I also know are very good Halloween vibe type this first one goes without saying, anything five, five Nights at Freddy's is gonna be Halloween-y. Because it's gonna be. It's Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, this is The Silver Eyes. This is um, the first book in the Five Nights at Freddy's se book series. Yeah, I don't really want to talk too much about it. It's about haunted toys in a pizzeria, I believe, this one. But they're great. They're, they're creepy. They're disturbing. Are easy to get a hold of as well. Um, the next one you may actually not have heard of, it's an Australian book and it's called Gap Year in Ghost Town by Michael Pryor. Um, I haven't actually read this one yet. I did start it a couple years ago, but it's been a while. Um, this follows a family of ghost hunters and a teenager who's attempting to decide whether or not he wants to be a part of this world. Um, there's ghosts, there's hauntings, there's creepy stuff. It's supposed to be very, very good. All right, this is actually the second book in the series because I don't own the first one, um, but I'm going to recommend the Skullduggery Pleasant series by Derek Landy for anybody who wants to read a middle grade book about a walkie t walking, talking, fire-throwing skeleton. And I feel like that's enough of a motivation to want to read this book, but it follows characters who have powers, who also have magic, characters who don't, characters who wield swords, and creepy beings attempting to take over the world. The next book I'm going to recommend is one that I have read, and that is Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. Honestly, you could read just about anything by Edgar Cantero. I have Meddling Kids here because this is actually a Scooby-Doo retelling. Um, it follows the Scooby gang years later. Um, I think they're in their 20s late 20s, early 30s or something of the sort. In the actual cartoons, they're in their late teens. Um, so this is 10, 15, 20 years later, and a lot has happened. These kids are completely messed up, um, but they're kind of forced back into the monster hunting world when monsters come in search of them. Um, Edgar Cantero has a very good way of making things creepy. I also read his book, This Body's Not Big Enough for the Two of Us, um, which was a split personality book, and that was very interesting and very well done, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I do recommend his writing. It is creepy, again, but there are some trigger warnings, so do look out for those. This next one, I started, haven't finished, but I've heard very good things about this next book, and that is Empire of the Vampire by J. Kristoff. I did start this book, and it does go back to vampires being monsters. This is not your romance with with vampires. This is vampires are monsters and they just want to devour. Um, I read the first, I think, hundred some odd pages of this book. It's very creepy. It's very well done. And I 
I need to be in the right headspace to read it though because it is that intense at points. So highly recommend. Again, watch the trigger warnings, but it's very, very well done. All right, the next book and actually author that I'm going to recommend is going to be The Girl in the Green Silk Gown by Shauna McGuire. I recommend Shauna McGuire as a great uh, horror time author. Um, another one of their pen names is Mira Grant, who I really wanted to recommend Into the D Drowning Deep, which is a mermaid horror story, but I don't have my copy and I'm kind of upset about that and I don't know where it is. So I'm hoping it's at my parents' house, but I don't know. Um, but I'm going to be recommending The the Girl in the Green Silk Gown. Um, this is based off of The Girl in the White Dress uh, myth of sorts, the ghost story. Um, this follows Rose Marshall, who has been dead for 60 years. She's been 16 for 60 years. Not in the Twilight way. She's actually a ghost and um, she's stuck because her murderer is still out there and is still killing. And basically the series, I believe, follows her. So I haven't finished it. I haven't done that yet. But I've heard only gr good things about the series. It has not gotten nearly enough attention. Um, but I'm actually very excited to jump into this one. I believe this is a three or four book series already. Um, it's not a brand new series of theirs, but... I still highly recommend it. The next book I'm going to recommend is by an author that I actually met, and that is Borrowed Souls by Chelsea Mueller. I am reading this book this month, at least that is the plan. Um, this is about a woman named Callie who uh, deals in souls for a living. So she's a human who trades souls um, as currency. So it's, from what I've heard, it's very well done. It gets creepy, but it's also very cute. So, highly recommend this one again. And then, because I guess I should probably recommend one book that's not utterly nightmarish, um, I'm going to recommend The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. Uh, this book has been everywhere. If you haven't seen it, this follows uh, Mika Moon, who is in a world where she has to hide her magic. She is a witch. However, she is recruited and hired as a nanny for two children who are both witches in a house. And the big thing with witches in this world is that they need to stay far away from each other to avoid any magic explosions or any such thing. And from what I understand, this is a very cute, sweet book that's a found family trope, and it's very well loved. So recommend. I'm planning on reading this one as well. There are so many more books out there that I would love to recommend, um, but I'm not going to here today because then this video would just never end. So if you want to see a video and I recommend and, and have me recommend some ebooks or something of the sort, I can also do that. Um, but that's what I got for you guys here today. What are your favorite reads to get you into the spooky mode? I would love to know. Um, again, I know this is not all of them. I'm not thinking it is. These are just some of my top ones and ones that I'm excited to get me into the spooky mode. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and um, subscribe. We post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and the occasional Sunday. And if you want to be reminded when we post these videos, hit the little bell icon down below. Until next time, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep reading. Bye! But this follows a character named Light, named Light, who finds a, the, the one piece, <laughs> wow, I'm so out of it today.